When all the votes were counted after Tuesday's big midterm election, we had a kind of a normal outcome, a split verdict. Democrats took back control of the House, Republicans retained control of the Senate, and there was a kind of a division in some of the big governor's races. But for a long time on Tuesday night, it looks as if a different story might emerge. You hear warnings of, of, of a blue wave coming. Is it a wave or a tsunami? We do believe there will be a blue wave. Democrats had dreams early on in the evening of a big blue wave taking over not just the House, but also the Senate and many of those governor's races. And for a while, the results that were coming in seemed to reconfirm that notion. But then a different reality set in. Here's how the night unfolded. Around 5 o'clock, exit polls in a big Associated Press vote cast poll emerged that seemed to show Democrats were on their way to a very big night indeed. A lot of the women's vote was moving toward the Democrats, a big wave of women voters, and that looked like it might be enough to propel the Democrats to a bigger night than they had been expecting. First of all, Barbara Comstock, a Republican incumbent, was defeated by Jennifer Wexton, a Democratic challenger in Virginia. Barbara Comstock, Republican member of Congress, losing her seat in Virginia. And then in Florida, Donna Shalala, a former Democratic cabinet member, took over an open house seat that Republicans had hoped to hang on to. You had two big turnovers and the signs of a big Democratic wave were taking shape. Then you also had some tantalizing possibilities in two really important states that seemed to confirm that idea. Again, in Florida, it appeared that the Democrats might win both a very hotly contested Senate race and a governor's race. They were leading in both of those races by a considerable margin. Bill Nelson, the Senate Democrat who was hanging on to a seat, it appeared, and Andrew Gillum, an African-American challenger, both took big leads in Florida. And in Texas, most surprisingly of all, Beto O'Rourke, a Democratic challenger, opened up a big lead over Senator Ted Cruz, the Republican incumbent, and Democratic dreams of not only taking the House, but having big wins in Senate races and governor's races were taking form right before their eyes. Beto O'Rourke, the Democrat, uh, he's ahead by 167,000 votes uh, over Ted Cruz. Then between 9 and 10 o'clock Eastern time on Tuesday night, a different kind of reality began to set in. In two big Senate races in Tennessee and Indiana, Democrats were losing and losing big. Republican leads kept growing. And at 10 o'clock, both of those seats were called for the Republicans. At that point, the Democratic dreams of taking over the Senate pretty much ended. Next, those tantalizing Democratic leads in both Florida and Texas began to evaporate as well. Ted Cruz was declared the winner in the Texas Senate race at about 10 o'clock. And by 11 o'clock, Andrew Gillum, the Democrat who had been hoping to win the governor's race, conceded to Ron DeSantis, the Republican candidate. And Rick Scott, the Republican Senate candidate, held on to a very tiny lead, but it appeared he was on his way to victory as well. So the idea of having historic victories in two of the biggest states in the country disappeared for Democrats. And then late at night, some good news began to emerge for Democrats again. They won a whole series of closely contested House races, and it was clear the control there would be in Democratic hands. And Democrats won some of those closely contested Midwestern governor's races in Illinois, in Michigan, and in Kansas. So good news returned for the Democrats. So by about midnight, when all was said and done, we had a split decision. Some good news for Democrats, some good news for Republicans. A divided country politically had produced, appropriately enough, a very divided government for the next two years.